Don't you hate it when this happens? You just casually run around the map with good intentions and one of these mage feckers is camping forever in the bush just to ruin your day. Sure, you can get Athena shield or radiant armor, but burst mages will still hurt like hell, especially when they are smart enough to get divine glaive. So today, you will learn how to avoid even receiving any damage and to secret counter methods that you can use against almost every mage. Like before, right in into the comments which hero you wanna see crying next and I will make a poll where you can choose which group will be covered in the next video. Now let's start with hero number one, Avatar, the legend of Vale. Vale is a nightmare for every marksman and assassin. High burst damage, huge AoE CC effects and he runs, mm -hmm. I mean flies really really fast thanks to his passive. He just needs one perfect combo and bam, you have slain an enemy. To understand how to counter this guy or any other hero we need to learn how his skills work first. Passive. After reaching level 4, 6 and 8, Vale can pick an enhancement for his skills. And he gains more movement speed after getting a kill or assist up to 10 times. This enables him to close the gap between him and any enemy very fast, to unleash his combo and blow his enemy away. First skill. Vale unleashes two wind blades towards the left and right to a designated area. His enhancement either lets him deal more damage or gives him a wider range and a shorter cooldown. Most Veil players will choose the damage option simply because it's better for the combo. Second skill. Veil sends a whirlwind forward, dealing magic damage and slows the enemy. His enhancement either lets the whirlwind deal continuous damage or knock up the enemy, which will be used most of the time. Ultimate. Veil summons a windstorm that slows enemies and explodes after 2 seconds. The enhancement either sucks harder than your mom, <coughs> the enhancement sucks his enemy into the middle or deals more damage, which is the preferred option. So his usual combo is either ult plus naga plus first skill or naga plus ult plus first skill. Now how do we counter this guy? It's actually pretty simple. Just buy a windproof jacket and you're good to go. Just kidding. Firstly, Vale is quite weak without his enhancement skills. I botched that line again but I already messed it up 5 times so I don't care anymore. In the early game it is pretty easy to bully him nonstop. Using a mid laner or Roma with strong pickoff abilities will put high pressure on him. For example Selena, Franco or Lilia. Once he falls behind in farm, it's very easy to deal with his skills. Like almost all other mages, he's very item dependent. No items means no damage and you can enjoy the light wind breeze in the park. Secondly, Bale doesn't have any blink skills. Even though he can fly really fast and escape a losing battle with his passive, heroes with chasing abilities can easily hunt him down. For example Zilong or Cho. Both of them can can easily stop him with CC effects and then finish him with a burst skills. Thirdly, Vale is a very shy guy. He can't withstand somebody getting close to him. Since he always tries to maintain a safe distance to his enemies, using high mobility heroes to get close to him will freak him out immediately. For example, Ling, Fanny, or Lancelot. Vale will start to panic when faced with a short distance fight. And he also needs to be very precise with the skills. Heroes with good mobility can easily dodge his skill though. Even when he lands his knockup, those skills won't affect Fanny midair. And Ling can easily dodge the burst damage with his ultimate. Fourthly, it is easy to ruin his combo. Vale can only land his combo on the slow walking enemies. Heroes with damage or CC immunity can easily dodge it though. For example Lunox, Lancelot, Kadita, Xbox, Benedetta, Julian or Zilong. Uh, Yuzong. Even one single dash can save you from his burst combo. The trick is to have it available when he's there and not mindlessly dash to save a bit of time. And fifthly, just burst him down. His own strength is also his weakness. Using a burst hero like Saber or Eudora would completely ruin his game. You just need to be smarter at camping than he is. This weakness counts for all burst heroes by the way. Overall, it should be pretty obvious why he's not part of the pro scene. While it's pretty obvious, why the next hero is. Although she is still highly underrated. The Southern Sea Queen, Karita. She's one of the rare mages with the ability to dive into the enemies and create chaos among the lines. She has a strong AoE knockoff skill, which she combines with her deadly AoE burst ult to finish off enemies. She is a flexible pick that can be used as a mid laner or Roma, which comes because of her balanced skill set that combines survivability and burst. Passive. Every 30 seconds, Karita gains the 
blessing of the ocean. Once she receives damage, her passive takes all damage for 4 seconds and afterwards recovers 65% of all damage taken within, the within this time. You can indicate if it's available by the floating bubble. So if she have her passive available, better poke her once before you fully engage against her. Or make sure to kill her in this 4 second time frame. First skill. She rides the wave in a straight line, dealing damage along the path and slows enemies with it. She can use the skill again to stop at her place and she can go through walls with it. Kadita also gains CC immunity and 50% damage reduction while inside of the wave. So don't just blast your ult into her face or apply your CC effects on her while she's riding it. Also don't pick Johnson as her enemy. She can just stop each of your rides without getting stunned. Second skill. Kadita summons a torrent from the ground that will knock up enemies after a short delay for 1.5 seconds. Which is a really long time so avoid it at all costs. This skill can be casted while she uses her first skill which shortens the delay. Ultimate. Kadita dives into the ground and sends 6 waves in all directions, dealing high burst damage and causing a slow effect to all enemies that have been hit. During this stage she is invincible and receives extra movement speed. After a short moment, the waves come back to her, dealing additional damage. If she managed to fully hit you, it's an almost guaranteed death for you if you're a squishy hero. Her ult can be interrupted by stuns by the way. The usual combo is first plus second plus ult or second plus first plus ult. Unlike other immobile mages, Kadita is more difficult to counter. But it's not impossible of course. For this you are here after all. Firstly, Kadita is pretty much helpless in the early game. Like many other mages, this fish really needs to become level 4 before she's able to deal any significant amount of damage. Strong early game mid laners like Lilia or Selena work perfectly against her, as well as strong early game junglers like Eamon or Paquito. This will be related to her second weakness, Kadita is weak against heroes with poking abilities. The thing that makes her very sturdy in a battle is her passive. Once her passive got popped during the laning phase though, she will be more hesitant to dive into the middle of a team fight. So playing a hero with good poking abilities will annoy the hell out of her. For example Xavier, Eve or Nana. These three might not be the best counter in a team fight, so it requires a precise and strategic positioning from your side. In order to not get picked off by your ultimate, immobile heroes are of course a good target for her. But what should she do against mobile heroes? Heroes like Fanny, Ling, Lancelot are of course a nightmare for her. But even heroes with a quick bling skill like Moskov are already a huge problem for her. Emma voice broke. Her second skill is easily avoidable when you have a bling skill. So don't just run around like a headless chicken. It's obvious a hero like her will dash towards you from a bush. So don't just go near the dangerous bushes. You could also of course just use Purify or a hero with a CC removal skill like one one. Both is pretty much a nightmare scenario for a Kadita player. Even when they land the combo perfectly, the enemy is still escaping them. You see a pattern here already I think. Playing against Kadita and Bale is all about avoiding the deadly combo. As squishy you can't just run into bushes alone and you need to check the map non-stop if you can locate them. If you can't see them on the map, assume that they are sitting in the bush next to you. When you always expect that the enemy will jump on you, they can never surprise you. This is one of the skills that set a mythical glory and epical glory player apart. Epical glory players run around without thinking, hence why I call them headless chickens, who play a squishy hero run mindless into the enemy's jungle area or into the typical ambush bushes. They look at the map non-stop and observe what observe observe it's not so hard Nico say observe what is happening on it man. Daddy chill. Fourthly, Kadita needs items to be effective. This weakness is the same like Veils or any other burst mage. No items means no damage. If you bully her in the early game and deny her farm, she will be <laughs> useless for a long time. Today I don't know what's wrong with me. Fifthly, instant stuns kill her combo. As I already mentioned, her combo can be interrupted by stuns. So having a hero in the team that can interrupt her ult instantly is a huge counter for her. Examples would be Franco, Hylos and Eudora. Who is the next hero we talk about? Eudora. As the first match that got added into the game, Eudora surprisingly performs very well. Her mechanics are very simple and she is super easy to master. So I make this one very short. Passive. Eudora's skills inflict a mark on the enemies that will trigger additional effects from her skills. First skill. Eudora casts a lightning dealing damage to all enemies in a range. If marked, you'll receive damage twice. Second skill. Eudora hurls a ball of lightning to the 
target, dealing damage, stunning them and reduce their magic defense. If you're marked, the ball will bounce up to 3 extra nearby enemies. Ultimate, you do a blast of lightning to a targeted enemy dealing a huge amount of damage. If marked, you will receive an extra lightning strike that deals AoE damage. So a combo is sitting in a bush and blasts you away with her skills. Pretty simple concept and pretty easy to counter hero. Firstly, Eudora's skills have a long skill animation and delays. Her ball of lightning travels quite slow and her stun only lasts for 1.2 seconds. So any skill with an immunity skill can avoid it. Heroes with blink skills can avoid the second phase of her ult and CC removal skills or purify is a nightmare for her of course. Secondly, Eudora's skills have a short range. One reason why almost all Eudora mains camp non-stop is because they are almost useless in a team fight. They can't reach the backline where her targets are, so a team that is specialized on team fights is a huge problem for her. The third weakness is connected to her second. And the weakness all burst mages share. Eudora is very weak under pressure and she is useless without farm. Her clearing speed is very slow, so it's super easy to harass her in the early game. Once she's behind in farm, you can just dominate the battlefield since you basically play a 5v4 game. Once you've managed to destroy the turrets of the enemy, she can't do anything anymore since she can't reach the backline anymore. So she probably tries to blast her ult into the tank's face, who just loves about the tickets from her. Which is the next and biggest weakness of her and all other burst mages. I'm sure a few of you already wrote it into the comments, but I wanted to wait before revealing the first secret to counter every burst mage. Use a sustain hero. Burst mages deal a certain amount of damage in a very short time, so squishy marksmen, mages and assassin will be dead, if they can sustain the damage. What happens though, when you play a sustain hero? Exactly, you sustain their combo. And since the skills of burst heroes have a long cooldown, you can easily kill them. Use a fighter or even a tank like Akai and Baratza's jungler, or a marksman who can afford to build defensive items like Beatrix or Brody. And the enemy's burst mage can leave the match and play some Candy Crush maybe, because they're not going to be useful at all. Whenever they show themselves and apply their combo on you, you just sustain the damage and either retreat when you're low or laugh into the face while slaughtering them afterwards. Picking 4 or even 5 squishy hero means though, that this match is most likely over before it even began. That's why picking heroes according to the enemy's lineup is so important. And again some thing that sets epical glory and mythical glory players apart. Next, let's talk about the clone of Eudora, Aurora. Aurora. Stop it. Get some help. Their combo is almost the same, the difference is that Aurora skills have a longer range and that she can easier deal AoE burst damage, but in exchange she has no instant stun like Eudora. She needs stacks from her passive for that. Passive. Every skill cast gives Aurora one stack of frost energy. Once she has three stacks, her next skill will freeze enemies that have been hit by her next skill, which also increases her skill damage to them. First skill. Aurora fires an icicle. Icicle. You say icicle? Yeah. Aurora fires an icicle that explode on the first enemy's hit, dealing damage and slowing the enemies in the area. Second skill, Aurora lock a single target, dealing damage and slow them greatly. Ultimate, Aurora summons an ice meteor to a targeted location. Enemies in the area take higher damage and get a 90% slow, while enemies near the area receive less damage and slow. The weaknesses are pretty much the same as Eudora's, so I won't repeat them and waste your time. Just make sure to check how many stacks she have before attacking her. If she have two, she can easily dash or two skills to freeze you, so don't think you're safe just because you don't have her full stacks. Lastly, we have the star of the burst mages, the dream of all weeps, Kagura. If you have a look at any top list from this year, Kagura will be part of it. She can easily dive into a team fight, picking off the enemy damage dealers and disengage right away to safety. Kagura can be independent during the laning phase thanks to her complete skill set. Poking, deadly burst, stuns, slows, blitz shield, knockback, CC cleansings, what? CC cleansing, pulling, AoE, she can do everything. And she has an answer to almost every situation. Since most players don't really know how she works, it is really important to learn her skill set so you know how to counter her. Passive, picking up her umbrella will give her a shield and stun nearby enemies for a short time. They will also be slowed for one second. This skill has a cooldown of 4.5 seconds. First skill, Kagura sends her umbrella to a desert 
designated direction, dealing damage to the enemies in the path and slowing them. Once she is too far away from the umbrella, it will automatically return to her, which will trigger her passive. Second skill, with the umbrella in her hand, Kagura removes all debuffs from her and jump to a designated area, leaving the Seimei umbrella behind. Without the umbrella, Kagura teleports to retrieve her umbrella, dealing damage to nearby enemies. This triggers her passive. Both skill cooldowns work separately. Ultimate, with the umbrella, Kagura invokes the power of the Seimei umbrella, dealing damage, knocking nearby enemies back and slowing them. Without the umbrella, Kagura invokes the power of the Seimei umbrella, again, to reset the cooldown of her first skill, dealing damage to enemies around the umbrella and slowing them. After 1.5 seconds, enemy heroes around the umbrella will be pulled towards it, receiving damage for a second time. She basically have 5 skills that you can use, which is why her combo looks like this. First plus old plus first plus second plus old, even after this combo, she still have her CC remove a skill available. Now, after learning her skills, we can start to study her weaknesses. Firstly, Kagura is weak against certain types of burst damage. Even though she have an escape skill that removes all CC effects, if her enemy can instantly burn her down, there is no way for her to recover from it. So heroes like Gushin and Hali can easily kill her by setting up an ambush. Secondly, Kagura is pretty weak against slippery heroes. Her skills require precise aiming and there are short delays while executing her combo. Heroes like Lancelot and Benedetta can easily dodge using their dash. And heroes with long blink skills can easily escape her umbrella's area. Kagura's burst requires a successful sequence to deal the maximum damage output. Once Lancelot or Benedetta uses their damage immunity, they can break out from her chains without much effort and turn the tables around, which lead to the third of her and basically the worst weakness of all mages. The one secret weakness they all share, which you can easily exploit once you pay attention to it. Their skill cooldowns. It sounds so simple, but ask yourself the question. How many players have you seen already who run headfirst into a burst mage? Maybe you are even one of them. Marksmen, fighters and assassin can all use their basic attacks to fight back. Almost all mages don't have this luxury. Once they use all of their skills, they are completely useless and a free kill target. This counts especially for Kagura, who don't has as many weaknesses as the other heroes. Once she used both of her second skills, you have about 6 seconds where you can burst her down without any worry. So instead of attacking her first, let her attack you. You need to avoid her damage of course, and once you've done that, you engage against her and just shred her apart. This technique works against every burst mage. Wait until they use their skills, not against you when you play a squishy hero of course and then engage against them while they are a helpless little puppy. If you forgot everything I told you until now, at least remember this one thing and you will have a much easier time against burst mages and any burst hero in general. Knowing how to counter heroes is super important, but knowing what to do when your allies don't adjust is just as important, if not even more important. Check out my video where I explain what to do when you have to adjust and how to turn a disadvantage into an advantage. See you over there!